Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome friends to this fourth and concluding lecture on justice. Uh, on justice we have been discussing uh, John uh, Rawls theory and many critique to his theory and through that we also tried to see uh, alternative uh, theorization of justice in um, contemporary political theory and in today's lecture we will focus on two uh, more such uh, theorization, one is feminist conception of uh, justice and also their critique to Rawls theory of justice and also uh, in second part of the lecture, we will discuss global justice where we will focus on uh, cosmopolitan, particularist and also uh, uh, Rawls uh, law of peoples. So, um, these are some of the things which we will discuss uh, in today's uh, lecture. We will start with uh, feminist conception of uh, justice where we will uh, see how they provide a criticism to Rawls theory of justice which they believe is um, somewhat inadequate to understand the uh, injustices that is there in the family and without resolving the issue of injustices in the family to talk about justice in the public and political sphere is somewhat. Um, problematic and therefore, in the feminist conception of justice, they try to combine justice with the notion of care and to have a society which is just, which is uh, free from uh, gender discrimination or gender just society uh, or peaceful society, what they argue is uh, the need to combine uh, the ethics of care with the notion of justice. So, this is what we will discuss in the first part. In the second part, we will discuss global justice through different thinkers. So, uh, the feminist theory of justice emphasizes on the need for a specific concept of justice that will focus specifically on women's rights and issues of inequality and discrimination or more precisely on a way of reasoning or thinking that is contrary to what we uh, normally call universal, abstract and objective conception of justice. Uh, so, basically uh, feminist theorists argue that they are looking for a specific concept of justice which will not just talk about a broader, universal, abstract kind of uh, um, a theory of justice, but that deals with the issue pertaining to women, particularly the injustices that is based or discrimination that is based on uh, gender division or uh, related violence or uh, discriminations. So, uh, while they want to construct a theory that deals with the issue, they also want to argue about a way of thinking or reasoning that is uh, contrary or in contrast to what is uh, usually presented as a universal, abstract and objective conception of justice. So, universal, abstract and objective conception of justice deals with something which is applicable to everyone without any consideration to particularities, without any consideration to the context or without any consideration to other kind of backgrounds. In contrast to that mode of thinking, which have been the dominant thinking in political theory, especially when they talk about justice and so on, uh, feminist will argue 
that we need to take into account the needs and requirements of particularities, particular uh, context, particular uh, community to understand their specific needs to create a society which would be more just. So, they are not just looking for a theory which deals with the issue pertaining to women, but they also want to uh, present a way of thinking or reasoning that is in contrast to this normal, universal, abstract and objective conception of justice. So, feminists like Catherine McKinnon and John Tronto are against the sexist or stereotypical way of thinking about women's morality and women's morality that is seen as limited to care, nurture, love and compassion. So, in uh, the sexist stereotypical way of thinking about women and women's role and their morality, these are reduced merely to the idea of care, nurture, love, compassion and peace and this universal, abstract, rational, objective thinking and theorization therefore, is regarded something which can be done by the male or uh, main member only. So, the discrimination that is based on this division of the role between men and women is also very problematic in feminist conception of justice. So, many feminist scholars have criticized the ways that regard rationality and objective impersonal thinking as male ethics of justice. So, in usual normal ways of uh, theorization, the rational, objective and impersonal thinking is regarded as male ethics of justice and deprive the women from this kind of universal, rational or objective impersonal thinking, because they are considered somewhat uh, compassionate, uh, talking about care, love, nurture and so on and therefore, incapable of thinking in the objective, impersonal, universal sense. So, um, many feminist scholars have criticized the ways that regard rationality and objective impersonal thinking as male ethic of justice and deprive the women from the modes of thinking which is regarded as particularistic or context specific. So, the feminist scholars have also questioned the theory of justice which divide the life between private and public. So, one of the problematic for the feminist um, scholars is this dichotomy between public and the private and most of the debates in political theory uh, revolves around the issue that is pertaining to uh, public or political and the private sphere is seen as something different to the public. Many feminists have criticized this dichotomy and uh, regard that many um, laws or legislation which pertain uh, to public life or political life also shape the private life. For instance, the uh, laws related to marriage, inheritance, transfer of property and so on is discussed, debated and framed in public life, but shapes the private life or vice versa. Many things that is about uh, public life, say for instance, gender role is also shaped in the public domain as well. So, this dichotomy between public and private is criticized and found problematic by many feminist scholars and they also argue that it overlook the injustices that is reproduced in the family as an institution. Now, in the uh, main uh, stream kind of uh, political theorization, uh, in the uh, uh, male dominant theorization of politics which believes in this uh, public and private dichotomy, family is seen as something which is related to private sphere. And um, therefore, the injustices that is reproduced there is not uh, seriously taken into consideration when they theorize about any notion of justice, liberty and so on. So, uh, the feminist scholars questions uh, this kind of argument also, uh, which overlook the injustices that is reproduced or perpetuated 
in the sphere of family itself which is largely seen as matter pertaining to the personal life. So, many other feminists argued that ethics of care should be made effective on the grounds of providing justice. So, for providing justice the notion or ethics of care should be made effective. There of the opinion that care and justice are complementary in nature. So, we cannot think about justice without the notion of care. Thus, feminist theories tries to bring together care and justice. So, these two things are not in opposition to each other. They want to project or they want to present a theory of justice which also include the notion of care. So, the care is not then excluded from the notion of justice. So, uh, Susani Moller Okin in her book Justice, Gender and Family argues for the feminist ideal of a gender free society where discrimination in rights and duties will not occur on the basis of sex. So, many discrimination or gender rules that a society formulate is based on this idea of biological sex and so on. And uh, gender is uh, a kind of further extension of such uh, division. So, um, Susan Moller Okin in her uh, work Justice, Gender and Family talks about a society which is free from this kind of gender based uh, discriminations and injustices in terms of distribution of rights and duties. So, a gender free society will ensure and nurture a society which is devoid of sexist discriminations and stereotypical attitudes towards women and their rights. So, a society cannot be a free society or just society when half of its population that means women by and large um, subjected to these gender discrimination or injustices and so much so that they forget or they do not realize or they do not uh, have the desire also to lead a active life in public political um, sphere. So, in this kind of uh, biased, stereotypical, sexist uh, society, justice cannot fulfill the requirement of the every uh, sections of the society, particularly those who are vulnerable uh, like women or uh, other such uh, groups and communities. And therefore, the ethics of care or nurture supplement or in a, in a sense complement the theory of justice. So, Okin argued that a gender free society will ensure and nurture a society which is devoid of sexist discriminations and stereotypical attitudes towards women and their rights. So, Okin is skeptical whether a welfare liberal ideal will be good enough to provide women justice in the society. So, she is not certain whether Rawls original position can deal with feminist uh, justice because it has not dealt with the family structure and thus it could not provide a gender just society. So, feminist scholars are skeptical of the Rawlsian theory of justice uh, precisely because it overlooks the fact that family as an institution itself perpetuate injustices. And uh, Rawls while he is talking about justice, he talks about the justice in the public political realm and uh, regard uh, family as something which is the private matter and uh, the noble ideals like sacrifice and other things which uh, uh, overlook or which um, made just injustices particularly to gender injustices invisible in the family. So, uh, they have the apprehension about this theory of justice in roles which overlooks the existence of injustices in the family. So, Okin claims that abolition of gender is necessary to fulfill Rawls objective of political justice in reality. So, they acknowledge the significance of Rawls theory of justice, but they also argue that to realize it, to make it effective, one needs to also abolish the gender based uh, discriminations or injustices in the society. So, she also argue that Rawls theory needs rethinking over the question of division of labor within the families. So, uh, that is criticism and some feminists argue that rights, duties and a gender free society 
could bring peace and it is associated with the feminist conception of justice. So, uh, the idea of justice is not merely about uh, redistribution of goods and resources, but to also create a society which will be more equal, more free and more peaceful. And to do that, one needs to take into account the particular or the specific requirements of different sections of the society, particularly those who are vulnerable such as women. So, they believe that the feminist conception of justice is also associated with the pursuit of uh, peace. So, to achieve peace, violence against women in domestic species such as households or structural violence in families must stop and other overt violence like rapes, sexual harassments or physical abuses should also stop. So, because the overt kinds of violence are equally threatening peace just like other kinds of violence like war, nuclear blasts, terrorist attacks and so on that destroy peace at the international level. So, the violence against women in uh, both domestic and also the overt kind of violence in the form of rapes, sexual harassments and physical abuses also destroy peace and harmony in the society. To ensure peace, one need to stop these kind of violence in against the women. So, many feminists have also argued about some other ways of limiting or reducing violence against women and to strengthen justice and peace in the society. And these ways are teaching conflict resolution, child caring and history of peace making in schools, particularly to the boys. Moreover, some feminists believe that men should equally learn to share child caring jobs, be more compassionate, open, cooperative, nurturer, just like women to understand the jobs a woman does and thereby to reduce structural or domestic violence or overt violence at the same time. So, in this way, we find in the feminist uh, theorization of justice, uh, they not only provide a criticism to uh, Rawls theory of justice which overlooks the injustices in the family, but also tries to bind uh, the ethics of care to the theory of justice together. So, in uh, the feminist conception of justice, we find a kind of uh, combination of a theory of justice with the ethics of care and together it helps to create a society which would be more just, more free and more peaceful. So, uh, that is all on this feminist conception of justice. Now, we will move on to this idea of global justice. Now, um, this we often come across and this idea of um, uh, self as part of uh, humanity or something that transcend the boundary of the nation state is not something new. So, many of us in India or most of us in India are familiar with this idea of Vasudhav Kutumkam. So, we are Indian, but we also consider this whole world as one family. So, uh, the global justice is uh, basically also about creating a society which is not just within its border, but to create or ensure justice for everyone in the world, in the globe and therefore, it transcends the limits of justice. So, no longer then we talk about justice in the fragmented sense of nation state or uh, society within a nation state. So, the concept of global justice is a contemporary political idea which emphasis on how idea of justice can be visualized and attain globally or in an international arena. So, uh, in political theory, this idea of global justice is relatively uh, uh, recent where uh, the theorization of uh, justice or justice as an ideal is not just limited to a state or a particular nation state, but we at the international level also tries to ensure justice everywhere. So, uh, some of the programs of say uh, international agencies such as United Nations, Millennium Developmental Programs or Sustainable Developmental Programs and so on caters to the needs of uh, some of these ideas. 
of uh, ensuring that um, uh, peace or um, freedom or equality is not something which is limited to a particular nation, but it should be made available to uh, uh, many people. Of course, the hidden agenda behind these kind of arguments makes it problematic, but the idea of global justice in principle, in theory is about extending the uh, political values of justice, uh, freedom or equality beyond the boundary of a nation state. So, uh, this concept is strongly influenced by the um, John Rawls principle of justice and his works, The Laws of People. So, in fact, the theory of justice is um, regarded as a universal theory of justice, which is applicable to every nation and yet the idea of nation state is very, uh, very strong there. And the laws of people, especially and other thinkers like Charles Bates and uh, Thomas Foggy also argued about this notion of global justice. So, cosmopolitanists like Charles Bates and Thomas Foggy agreed to the two principles of roles, namely principles of equal basic liberty that is the first principle if you remember John Rawls theory of justice and the second that we call difference principle. It should be used and made applicable globally or in the international space as well. So, international arena or a space as well. So, However, they believe that the application of these two principles should not be limited to make use of it in the nation state alone as Rawls pointed out. It should have a global significance to it to prevail global justice to all people as per the notion of cosmopolitanism. Now, the term global justice broadly focus on the debates over human rights and just or fair allocation of resources or distribution of goods or benefits or services internationally to all people across the nation states around the globe. So, that is the primary concern of global justice which talks about human rights or just or fair allocation of resources or distribution of goods or benefits or services internationally to all people across the nation states around the globe. Now, in this lecture, we will focus on this global justice through the following uh, perspectives, basically cosmopolitanism and then particu uh, particularist kind of uh, perspective on global justice and then we will conclude by uh, discussing Rawls law of peoples. So, cosmopolitanism, uh, the concept is based on the stoic idea or stoicism that emphasizes individual as citizens of the world. So, uh, the ideal is that citizen or the cosmopolitanism believes in the individual as citizens of the world and not of a particular nation state. So, it believed in the moral worth of every individual. So, the moral worth or dignity of each individual is um, acknowledged or regarded and considered such value as necessary to attain the solidarity among all individuals around the globe. So, the solidarity then must not be confined to the nation state or within the nation state. So, this value that the moral worth of every individual matters and individual is the citizen of the world is required to attain the solidarity among all individuals around the globe and feel themselves as equal beings in the world. So, nothing, no one is superior or no one is inferior in the world, capable of moral values, despite being categorized as individuals belonging to a particular sovereign nation states or citizens under national boundaries. So, we may live our life in a particular nation state, but we must develop or have the moral capability to regard ourselves as the citizen of the world and to extend our solidarity to every individual in the world where the life of everyone, every single individual matters and that solidarity will be the basis of that kind of justice that we seek to ensure in the world. So, for cosmopolitanists, an individual should take oneself as an integral part or member of the global 
community of human beings or the citizen. So, what does it mean to be uh, regarded as the member of the global community or human beings of the citizen? So, some of the challenges that we face in contemporary world, for example, climate change or terrorism or say human rights violation in some um, distant country, why we should all take responsibility or contribute in fighting uh, say climate change or in tackling global terrorism or to protecting human rights violation in some distant countries. For that kind of um, solidarity or involvement requires a new uh, ways of uh, uh, looking at or presenting or thinking about uh, self-identity which is not confined to a particular uh, nation. And uh, the uh, 21st century uh, because of the challenges that we face at the global level, we uh, see and it becomes essential for us to see ourselves as part of larger community which is beyond the nation state because those challenges can not be tackled by a particular nation state even if it is superior in terms of economic and military resources. So, it requires global collaboration uh, so on uh, climate change or the uh, peace agreement or such other global uh, collaboration you require the um, coming together of all the nation states. So, the idea that cosmopolitan thinkers or theorists argue that because of the challenges that we uh, face or the justice that we want to ensure is possible when we are equally concerned about justice in other parts of the world. So, in other words, uh, uh, the cosmopolitan individual imagine himself or herself not as a part of a citizen of a particular nation state or particular sovereign nation state, but also as an integral part or member of the global community of human beings or citizens. So, the humanity is the biggest community and nothing can replace the worth or the significance of humanity when it comes to, to see oneself as part of the larger community which must transcend the boundary of nation states. So, the cosmopolitan um, argument is about presenting the individual as the member of a uh, global uh, uh, citizen. It believes that even the identity of any individual belonging to any state is influenced by multiple cultures across globe and that makes one feel connected to the others globally. So, this imagination or consciousness of oneself being integral part of uh, global community is also result of this multiple cultures across the globe that makes one feel connected to others globally. So, even if we uh, live in physical sense in a particular nation, the culture or the politics and economics of that uh, nation is influenced by the multiple cultures from across the globe and thereby one feels then emotionally, psychologically connected to the other peoples in the world as well. So, the concept of global justice can prevail if the moral worth of individuals allows equal and fair distribution of goods or benefits among people globally and not just domestically within the nation state. Thomas Pogge, though accepted Rawls idea of redistribution of wealth, but he criticized Rawls on the ground that he fails to extend the idea of domestic justice which prevails inside nation state to bring it in the international space or international arena to make it global. So, Thomas Pogge argument is about redistribution of wealth and resources in the international arena as well. So, he suggested that moral universalism is necessary to make it realize that all individuals or citizens around the globe are subjected to some moral principles or values and these moral principles and values demands to make similar types of benefits or goods and burdens available or accessible to all people globally 
टू सस्टेन ए ग्लोबल जस्ट वर्ल्ड और ग्लोबल जस्टिस सो ग्लोबल जस्टिस डिमांड्स डेट द बेनिफिट्स और रिसोर्सेज और बर्डन्स मस्ट बी मेड अवेलेबल और एक्सेसिबल टू ऑल पीपल ग्लोबली सो ही पॉइंटेड आउट डेट द इनिक्वालिटीज डेट कैन नॉट बी जस्टिफाइड और एक्सेप्टेबल विद इन ए पर्टिकुलर नेशन स्टेट should not uh, principle be justified between or among nation states so this uh, point we need to discuss carefully that inequalities that cannot be justified or acceptable within a particular nation state so some inequalities some injustices that we do not accept in our uh, domestic national life we must not in principle allow such injustices or um, uh, inequalities to prevail in the global arena as well or among and between the different nation states so there is the necessity to find ways or principles or principled reasons to treat every case of redistribution of resources or benefits differently across nation states now in contrast to this cosmopolitan argument about extending the principle of redistribution of resources as we have discussed in rawls in the global arena as well the particularism or particularists argued against such kind of uh, universal uh, distribution uh, so their argument is basically that another concept of on this idea of global justice which emphasize on the particularists and partialists stand point against the idea of global justice so mcentire is one of the particularists who rejects universalism or universal redistribution of goods or benefits he argues that patriotism belongs to exhibit loyalty to one's own nation or a particular nation state and love of one's family and friendship and therefore to universalize is will not serve uh, the purpose of justice so for the particularists justice is about distribution of goods but those goods are to be enjoyed in a particular social setting within a particular nation state so in this argument we see that they argue against the kind of universal cosmopolitan values which uh, in a way uh, is based on the idea those who claim to be uh, universal are rootless people and rootless people do not share responsibility do not share loyalty to any particular uh, community or society and therefore they enjoy the benefit of redistribution but do not share the responsibility and loyalty and therefore the uh, particular is to make uh, distribution effective or just argue against such kind of rootless or distribution of resources without allocation of uh, responsibility and so on now uh, we will discuss uh, rawls law of peoples and this idea of global justice in his work the laws of peoples which he wrote in 1999 rawls talks about how to create a well ordered society the concern for rawls in this book was to create a well ordered society and to arrive at laws to which a well ordered society would agree or accept he is basically referring to liberal societies of the world and for him well ordered peoples are reasonable liberal peoples and decent non liberal peoples even those who are not liberal and yet decent enough how they will all come together to form or create a well ordered society and they will agree to some laws uh, which would be binding to everyone even those who are so primarily he is talking about liberal peoples but also those who are non liberal decent peoples so he only considered using his two principles of basic liberties and different principles in liberal nation states alone and not globally across the nation states rather he said that different principles need to be chosen for international level so for creating a just order globally he wanted different kind of um, uh, principles of justice and not the uh, different principles that he argued 
in his text on a text of justice. So, uh, in this text he uh, uh, used two original positions to derive his law of peoples, particularly for liberal peoples. There, the first position is to establish social contract of the liberal and constitutionally democratic government, where political cooperation is needed to regulate basic structure of society. So, that is the first position which he talks about to establish social contract of the liberal and constitutionally democratic government, where political cooperation is needed to regulate the basic structure of society. And the second position is that which revolves around the representative of liberals people. So, to arrive at uh, the laws that would govern the people, especially the liberal people and even those who are non-liberal but decent people, he talks about two original positions. So, remember in or uh, a theory of justice he is talking only about uh, one original position right uh, that is the will of ignorance. Here he talks about two original positions to derive at the laws of people which would bind the uh, liberal or decent people together and to create a society which would be orderly society. There the first position talks about establishing social contract of the liberal and constitutional democratic government, where the political cooperation is needed to regulate basic structure of society. The second position revolves around the representative of liberals people. At this position, Rawls emphasized on the foreign policy at the international level that only liberal people would make choice to it. So, Rawls focused on to establish a social contract in order to deal with the global context. He believed that relatively well ordered society should perform their duty to bring the burdened society along with an outlaw society into a society of people or international community of people which consists of legitimate decent uh, peoples. So, he argued that target of distribution is the achievement of a society's political autonomy and resulting upon that it is joining the society of people. So, here this community or the liberal people have been given the responsibility to bring together those people or those uh, decent people who may not be liberal to create a society which would ensure order or more orderly society. So, for him peoples are represented in the society of peoples and not individual human beings. So, uh, Rawls in this text is talking about peoples, the collectivities and not necessary in the sense of people as individual human being. So, here his uh, purpose is to create laws which would be binding for those particularly who are liberals but may also help in creating orderly society by including those who may be not liberal, but decent people. And to create that kind of society, he talks about these two kind of uh, original positions, which I have just discussed. Now, it can be argued and this we have discussed before that uh, Rawls while focusing on liberty talks about liberal egalitarian theory of justice, unlike Robert Nozick who was about the uh, libertarian uh, theory of justice. So, it can be argued that Rawls is a relatively egalitarian and his theory is egalitarian theory of domestic justice, because he rejects application of his difference principle in the international arena. He has instead a relatively inegalitarian theory of international justice, where the liberal people have been given significantly more responsibility to include those peop decent people who may not be liberal and yet together they constitute the global just uh, world order. So, his principles that explains governing his law of peoples are people should be so, these are some of the principles that he talks about. The peoples should be free and their freedom should be respected by everyone. 
So, the liberals or not liberals, they should all be free and it must be respected by everyone. So, that is the first principle. Then, peoples are to observe treaties and be parties to it. So, the global treaties or international treaties must be observed and people should be parties to such treaties. Peoples are to observe a duty of non-intervention or non-interference. So, that is the another principle to ensure or another laws to ensure global world order. That is that all people must observe this duty of non-intervention or non-interference. People have the right to self-defense. Peoples are to respect human rights. Peoples have duties towards vulnerable sections of society and to assist those living under unfavorable conditions of life. So, these are some of the laws through which Rawls is arguing about creating a orderly society or just society at the global level where the freedom of every uh, people should be respected by everyone and global treaties should be observed and people should be party to it and the peoples here include not only the liberal people of course they have given uh, more responsibility but it also include those decent people who may not necessarily have liberal ideology. So, Rawls is basically talking about a society of peoples or an international community of peoples of or groups who would follow the ever mentioned laws which I have discussed in their relationship through which they would hope to achieve and maintain mutual respect among peoples globally. And these are some of the laws through which a uh, global just order could be attained or sustained among and uh, between different nation states which may be sovereign and yet they together constitute this global uh, just order among themselves. So, uh, these are some of the issues on feminist conception of justice and global justice. The themes that I have discussed in today's lecture for that you can refer to these books by Bhargav and Asoka Acharya and also these other books which I have been referring to. So, these are some of the uh, books for today's lecture on uh, feminist conception of justice and the idea of global justice. That is all for today. Thanks for listening. Thank you all.